a spaceship on an important mission has crashed on the moon and the situation is dire, oxygen levels are declining, engines are down, a crew member is hurt, and they're too far from the research station. When Dr. Song awakens, she falls from her seat and notices the water, which means there's a leak. She wants to fix it, but when she looks out, she discovers the spaceship is resting on the edge of a massive chasm. This all started a few weeks ago. The year is 2075 and Earth is going through a serious water shortage. Sea levels are falling, it never rains, and infant mortality rates have spiked as people desperately consume contaminated water. Food shortage keeps getting worse because vertical farms can't do enough, and having pets becomes illegal. The government establishes a supply regulation to control the situation, rationing water depending on social class, the most important citizens get gold cards with unlimited access. This has caused hundreds of riots from the lower classes. At the Environment for Human Survival Research Center, Song is working with plants and animals. She gets a visit from Section Chief Kim of the SAA, or Space and Aeronautics Division, asking her to join their mission. At first she refuses, but she changes her mind when she hears it's about the Balhi Lunar Station, where her sister died five years ago. Because of her death, the government compensated Song with a gold card. Song attends a meeting to learn the mission details and meet the crew. The Balhi Station had to be closed because of a radiation leak five years ago, so now the new team has to retrieve some important samples and capsules to bring back to Earth for research. Once they land on the moon, they have 24 hours to complete the mission, and the capsules must be transported in low temperatures. If they have any damage, they need to be extra careful with them. The team isn't told the capsule's contents or their location, so it's all very suspicious. Moments before takeoff, the crew is shocked to learn the usual co-pilot has been replaced at the last second by a stranger named Lee. The spaceship leaves Earth and reaches orbit right on schedule, and their flying goes smoothly until they get closer to the moon. The alarm starts ringing and they learn that the docking system is having trouble, meaning the bolt won't last if they get into the landing orbit. Since they can't reach the SAA, they decide to release the landing module early. Unfortunately the main engine won't ignite and they have to change to thrust controls, which don't work either. The spaceship crashes on the ground and slides down until it gets stuck upside down on the edge of a chasm. Back to the beginning, the crew suits up and tries to open the door, which causes the ship to slide down a little more. Some furniture starts falling and the crew dodges it, but it breaks a window instead. Song slips out and manages to hold on at the last second, and the others carefully grab her hand to bring her back inside. Afterward they get out only to watch the spaceship slide down and fall into the abyss. There's no communication with the SAA and the station is a little over 7 kilometers away, but considering the limited oxygen, they have no choice but to start walking toward Balhi. Moments later, Huang collapses because of his punctured lungs. His suit is out of water, but when the others try to give him some, Huang stops them and throws up blood before dying. The crew decides they'll pick up his body later when they get rescued and keep moving after leaving a vial of water in the guy's hand. By the time they make it to the station, their oxygen levels are at 1%, so they hurry inside on the verge of collapse and shut the airlock just in time. Then a flashback reveals Song in her old lab trying to decrypt a message left by her sister. An old conversation helps her guess the password is silent C in Latin and once the message is decoded, it reads find Luna. Later she asked to Wong about it and he explained that Luna is the data storage at Balhi Station. In the present, the crew recharges their oxygen supplies before going out to explore the station. Since it's dark, their first goal is to find the power supply. As they walk through the hallway, they're shocked to find a body on the ground. There have been many attempts to break out into the station since it was shut down, and the suit and weapon indicate the man is a mercenary, probably working for the resource mafia. A quick scan indicates he drowned, which doesn't make sense. As they continue to wander, the crew gets another surprise, the radiation levels are normal. Song is getting too suspicious of the government's lies and wants to do an autopsy on the mercenary to check for any potential danger they may encounter, but Captain Han orders her to keep moving. Eventually the team reaches the main hub and turns on the power. The communication system is still down, but the radiation levels are okay and there's plenty of oxygen, so they take off their helmets and activate the air filtration system in the rest of the base. Afterward they examine a map of the base and discover some red areas that require level 1 authorization and were closed because of the supposed radiation contamination. There are three storage areas and eight gates, so Han decides to split the group into three teams. Han's team reaches storage one but the door won't open, so they have to force it by hand. They only get to open it a few inches before an arm falls through, and when they open it completely, they find all the bodies of the previous crew. They're in the same state as the mercenary, so they didn't die from radiation either. There are blood handprints on the walls indicating the crew tried to escape, but it seems the area was shut down in an emergency. This means the crew died after the shutdown and not before as the government said. Afterward Han's team enters storage 1 and notices someone had already been there. There are some capsules on the ground but they're all empty. Song's team heads to storage 3, but they stop when they find a strange biosignature on the scanner. Since it's moving alone, it can't be a crew member, so Chief Gong decides to investigate and tells his teammates to wait. Since this is getting too weird, 
Lee tells Song that she was right to be suspicious and offers to cover for her while she heads off to the infirmary to find the medical records. As soon as she's gone, Lee enters storage 3 to discover the power isn't working here and the capsules are empty. He accidentally drops his flashlight and when he reaches under the furniture to retrieve it, something takes the flashlight away. After the initial shock, Lee tries again, only to find a capsule full of water. Meanwhile the team heading to storage 2 finds some creepy drawings on the ceiling. This storage door won't open either, so they have to hack the lock. Once inside, they discover that someone already searched the place and the remaining capsules are empty. There are bodies on the ground but this wasn't radiation death either because the levels are fine. When he looks more closely, Suchin realizes one of the bodies is holding a capsule. When he pulls it from the stiff fingers, he accidentally presses the body's chest and causes it to cough up a strange spore that enters Suchin's eyes. The capsule he grabbed is empty too, so the team begins heading back. On his way out, Suchin feels strange and water droplets can be seen moving under his skin as he starts hallucinating things like a starfish on the wall. Another flashback reveals that before the mission, Song had already been researching the Belhi station and noticed a weird sign. Later Kim surprised her by saying that the sign wasn't on the door, it was on the floor. In the present, Song gets a message from Gong telling her that he lost the weird signal and he's going back, so she has no choice but to return without finding the symbol. When she makes it to the storage, she finds Lee at the door and sees how suddenly something pulls him back into the room. Song immediately goes inside and discovers Lee being choked against the ceiling. Once he's dead, the mysterious entity drops Lee on the floor and takes the capsule away. When Song tries to take a closer look, the entity disappears. At that moment Gong returns and calls the rest of the crew. Dr. Hong inspects the body and discovers Lee has fractures all over, which matches Song's weird story. Han is still suspicious so he watches the footage from Song's body cam, confirming the existence of the strange entity. They move the furniture where it was hidden and discover a very long vent system, so they must decide if searching it. Meanwhile some crew members return to the main hub and Suchin suddenly starts vomiting water all over the floor, unable to stop. His teammates call the others and as Hong rushes back, she tells them to put on hazmat suits and stop the water. The teammates put Suchin on his back, but water still drips off the corners of his mouth. Soon Hong arrives and tilts his head back, causing the water to keep coming out. The doctor cuts Suchin's throat to insert a tube that makes the water spurt out like a fountain, then she takes a sample of his blood only to see it come out all watery. Water keeps coming out of the tube with no end in sight and eventually Suchin dies, drowning just like the bodies they found earlier. Once the filtration system clears the air, the team can take off the hazmat suits. Hong will do an autopsy of Lee's body and Song will check out the data storage, not caring about Han's refusal anymore. The other crew members want to quit because it's become too dangerous, but Han announces the mission is still on and takes some men with him to search for the entity while telling the rest to re-establish communications at any cost. Han's team enters the vents and finds the same creepy drawings on the walls. Suddenly their scanner finds a biosignal approaching them, however it seems to be in another part of the facility because it passes right over them. The team tries to follow the same direction and comes across a door, but it's locked. At that moment they get a call from the men in the main hub saying they made progress with the comms, so the team decides to go back. Meanwhile Suchin's body is taken to the infirmary, where Hong begins opening him up. Song checks the medical records, but they're all locked, so she goes to gather tissue samples from the other bodies. Minutes later while Song is working, she thinks she's found the body of her sister, but when she checks the tag she notices it's a different woman with the same surname. Afterward Song returns to the infirmary, where Hong confirms that the body was filled with water from the inside with no signs of external damage. Song mentions the other bodies had similar symptoms and when she checks the samples, she discovers the previous crew were in perfect health when they died, with no signs of virus or bacteria. Not to mention Suchin's blood appears to hold a separate layer of something unrecognizable. Back to Han, he learns from the others that they need to fix the digital unit. Usually the elevator would take them there, but it's out of order so someone will have to climb down, which is very dangerous. Han volunteers to go, and when he stops by to inform the doctors, Song shares a theory, the creature didn't hurt her and is familiar with the internal base structure, so she thinks it may be a survivor. However Han thinks it isn't possible. Afterward Song and Hong examine the vomited water and notice it's distilled. It seems the water itself could be the virus, probably extraterrestrial, and it could be the solution to the drought on Earth. It's not in the air, so something happened five years ago that made it spread among the old crew. At the chasm, Han starts carefully descending to reach the unit. Suddenly the elevator starts moving on its own and the computer controls are unable to stop it. Han holds on tight and moves out of the way just in time, so the elevator keeps going and disconnects Han's rope in the process. Then it crashes into the station, causing the power to go out only to return a second later. Then the crew begins lowering the rope again, but Han asks them to throw the whole thing off because the elevator is now falling. Moving quickly, Han connects the rope to one of the shafts and dodges the elevator again, but this time his body bounces against the metal and his oxygen system is damaged. After dreaming of his sick daughter back on Earth, Han decides to keep going instead of returning and successfully finds the unit. He quickly changes a panel so the team can reboot the system, 
Then he passes out. Thankfully the crew quickly saves him and brings him back, but they have bad news, the comms still aren't working. The computer is completely functional, yet for some reason there's no signal. Suddenly they detect an unknown signal coming from storage 3, so they go there to investigate. The room turns out to be empty, but when they check Lee's body, they find an old communicator indicating he's a rogue agent. Using this communicator, they manage to make the comms work and get in contact with Director Choi of the SAA. After Han updates her on everything, Choi orders him to concentrate on finding the intruder, and Han asks for the codes to access the restricted areas. He also points out Choi isn't surprised by anything he mentioned, so he suspects she knows more than she lets on. Meanwhile Song wanders around the station and finally finds the door with the sign on the floor, but she can't open it without the right code. She returns to the lab and decides to try a new test, she drops some blood on a sample of vomited water, and it immediately starts multiplying at an amazing speed. They immediately hit it with extinguishers and all the drops instantly freeze, confirming that the water can only multiply as long as its host is alive. Song rushes to see Han, announcing the sample they had to pick up has always been water and accusing Han of knowing everything. A flashback reveals what Kim and Choi told Han before the mission. Song's sister Won Kyung had found water on the moon, so the Belhi station was built to study it. Han tells the others of this and says he kept the secret to protect them from moles like Lee, but Song immediately corrects him. She points out the lunar water is what killed everyone because it can't be controlled, but the government is hiding that information because they probably want to commercialize it without caring about the consequences. Then in private Song tells Han that her sister wanted her to be there and asks him for the access codes. They go to the door with the symbol and after Han removes their body cams, he uses the code to finally open it. The walls are covered with the database, and on a hatch on the floor, they're shocked to see some leaves. When they open it, they discover a long tunnel covered with plants. Song and Han immediately bring the rest of the crew and they agree to go investigate. While E2 stays by the hatch to guard it, the others carefully climb down and find multiple storage rooms filled with plants, they also notice this area isn't on the map. Eventually they find a control room with tons of sample capsules, including a broken one on the floor from which all the plants grew out. The team begins gathering capsules to take back, and Han notices something moving among the vines. Other crew members notice something in the hallway only to suddenly scream and run away. The creature tears off E1's arm to steal his capsule, so Sun shoots it to make it drop the sample. The creature runs to hide in the vines and Hong approaches E1 to discover he's died. The others approach the vines and open fire when the creature moves, jumping and climbing around like a monkey. It doesn't stop moving until a stray bullet hits a bursting pipe, making the entity fall. The crew approaches the creature and they're shocked to see it's actually a young girl with a weird protuberance on her jaw and reptile eyes. When she sees them come closer, she quickly runs away and leaves through the upper tunnel, knocking out E2 in the process. The others try to follow her, only to discover that the sample she dropped before is broken and now the water is making contact with E1's blood, multiplying at a crazy speed. The crew rushes to retrieve the sample briefcase and runs to climb out while hearing an alarm go off in the control room. They pick up E2 and make sure to lock the hatch again before rushing to the infirmary. Afterward Hong and Song operate on E2 because there's blood in his lungs, and Ryu has to donate some blood to help. Once he's left alone in the infirmary, Ryu reveals he also has an extra communicator and sends someone a message saying he has a sample. The mysterious person replies with orders to eliminate all witnesses. Then the crew discusses what happened and Song theorizes that the girl is trying to stop them from taking the water. Han calls Choi to confirm they have the samples and informs her the intruder is a young girl, but Choi tells him to kill her anyway. After she hangs up, Choi reveals that she has a picture with the girl from many years ago. Next, Han authorizes Song and Hong to go back into the tunnel to gather information while he returns to storage 3. He goes inside the vent and this time he opens the door, allowing him to find the broken vent the girl used to move around and a bunch of blood stains. Han follows the blood while two of his men find another vent opening in a hallway, so they go inside and find an area not on the map. There are more bodies here and they start following the blood too, only to suddenly be startled when Han falls in front of them. It seems the girl has complete knowledge of the station and can move through it effortlessly. In the mysterious tunnel, Song and Hong access the database and Song admits that she had no idea her sister was on the lunar base until she was informed of her death. Won Kyung had called her once before the accident, but Song didn't pick up the call and now regrets it. When they finally breach the computer's security, they're shocked to see all data has been erased. The duo returns to the infirmary and finds Ryu taking the samples, pretending that he has orders from Han. Song gets suspicious and stops him, and when Ryu takes out his gun to kill them, they all step back when they see the girl at the door. Ryu tries shooting her, but the girl dodges all the shots and jumps on Ryu to knock him down. While the rest of the crew arrives, Song carefully shows she means no harm and puts down a capsule for the girl, who has a tag with the name of Song's sister. When the girl grabs the sample, Ryu destroys it with a shot, and the girl collapses as she has a seizure. Song notices the protuberances on her cheeks moving like gills, but the girl runs away because she can take a closer look. Afterward Song puts away all the other capsules and tells the crew that the water can't kill the girl. 
Some crew members want to kill her but Song forbids it because the girl is the only chance they have to save humanity. Then Han calls Kim, who confirms Choi was the one who ordered the station to be shut down and not everyone in SAA agreed. He refuses to share more information, he only urges Han to work with Song to find the truth. When Kim leaves his office, he discovers some rioters have managed to break a storage wall and now everyone is rushing to collect water. Meanwhile Ryu sends a message asking for support forces. He gets a call from his contact, revealing it's an American man who insists he should kill everyone and go to gate 7. Ryu grabs all the samples and as he leaves, E2 wakes up and sees everything. E2 tries following Ryu, who immediately shoots him and hides all the evidence. Back to Han, he tells the others they'll lure the girl out to capture her alive. They find the girl's location with the scanner, and then Song stands in the middle of a hallway with a sample in her hands. Suddenly the girl comes out of the vents, so Song puts down the sample and begins walking away. Han closes the first gate and drags Song out so he can close the other one, causing the girl to run out and get her leg caught in the door. Song tries to help her and as the girl bites her, she reveals a tag on her neck that says Luna 073. When Song calls her that, the girl starts crying, and Han shoots her with a sedative. Then Song opens the door and rushes to comfort the poor girl. At that moment, Ryu activates closure for all the gates from the main terminal. Luna panics and rushes to escape through a vent, so Song grabs the sample and follows her right before the gate closes between her and the team. Hong is locked up in the infirmary and when she checks on the samples, she finds E2's body inside the freezer, so she informs the others. Sun runs to go through an entrance right before the gate comes down, so he starts making his way to the command center. Han and Gong manage to run through a few doors as well, but soon they also get stuck so they decide to take the vents. In the meantime Song moves through the vents. Her map is broken and she can't contact the others, but Luna waits for her to show her the way. After lots of wandering, Song finds an office that Luna transformed into her personal hideout. There are drawings on the walls, a bunch of capsules, and pictures of the old crew including Wan Kyung. Song shares some candy with Luna and after the girl falls asleep, Song finally finds the missing data brick. She connects it to a computer and watches a video called Water Response Test, in which the previous crew tested the lunar water on a fish. The little animal survived and the water filled a small tank. There's also a video called Luna and Song is horrified to discover the previous crew had done genetic experiments on human clones. Whenever a Luna died to another failed test, they would bring out a new one, making the number on her name go up with each test. The current Luna is the 73rd clone and the only one who survived. The next video is from Won Kyung, who explains she did all this to save humanity but isn't proud of it. Then Song injects Luna with the water sample, which instantly heals her wounds. At the same time, Hong escapes the infirmary through the vents and after wandering for a while, she's shocked to discover a storage with hundreds of Lunas in bags. She screams when someone touches her, but it's just Han. Together they find a door at the end of storage that takes them near to the control room, but they'll have to use the vents to access it. Meanwhile Sun makes it to the command center, only for Ryu to welcome him with his gun out. Ryu pushes Sun and shoots him once before checking the map, allowing Sun to jump on him and disarm him to then start a fight. The men struggle for a while and once Ryu manages to push Sun off, he retrieves his gun and shoots Sun again. Noticing he's fallen next to the suitcase, Sun retrieves a sample before he gets shot once more, causing the capsule to fall and break. Ryu locks Sun up and watches how the water starts multiplying with his blood. Sun gets infected and after hallucinating a starfish, he starts throwing up huge amounts of water before drowning to death. Then Ryu tries to turn on the air filtration system, only to discover an anomaly in the pressure system. This is caused by the water in the plant rooms, which has spread and flooded the area. Ryu ignores the warning and opens the filtration system anyway, giving the water room to keep on growing. At that moment, Han and Hong drop down from the vent and find Sun's body but no Ryu in sight. Han immediately opens all the gates, and now the water has even more room to keep on expanding. Gong is still in the vents and eventually finds Luna's hideout. He wants to shoot the girl, but Song gets between them. When Gong informs Han, he also wants him to keep them alive and bring them over to the main hub. Afterward Han finally finds Ryu and jumps on him, starting a fight. The men struggle to gain control of the gun and keep accidentally shooting it, creating holes in the ceiling. Eventually Han manages to overpower Ryu and tries to choke him, but Ryu punches him and gets away as he accidentally drops his communicator. At that moment the filtration system gives in and water begins sprouting out of all the vents, leaking out of the base and freezing under space's cold temperature. The water also begins to dribble through into the hallways and creates a wall between Ryu and Han, giving Ryu the chance to escape. Then a flashback shows the incident five years ago. Everyone was working normally when suddenly the alarm started ringing, so the crew ran to evacuate while the water found a little seed on the floor, instantly making it grow. The computer kept closing the gates and not everyone made it out on time. Others found the hallway blocked by guards who would shoot at them to keep them back while the gates closed. In the present, the water is starting to flood the station. The crew reunites in the medical bay and discusses how to proceed. Suddenly Song starts feeling sick and runs to lock herself up in another room, not wanting to infect the others. 
Then she starts vomiting water and passes out as she sees herself drowning. But while thinking about her sister, Song sees a light and starts fighting against the water. Minutes later, Song is shocked to wake up in the infirmary. Hong theorizes that Luna's bite filled her up with antibodies. Then Han and Gong read Ryu's messages and call Kim, who confirms the SAA rescue ship has detected a second spacecraft approaching the base. Song wants to know what will happen to Luna, and Kim explains she'll be taken to the Ministry of National Defense and the government will continue with the experiment. Song refuses to bring the water back to Earth and Han reveals he asked Kim to gather the other officials to go against Choi, but Kim explains nobody wanted to join him because Choi is powerful. After the call ends, Song says they should go to the International Institute of Space Biology because it's a safe and neutral space station where they can buy time to make a better plan. Meanwhile Ryu wanders around the station as he starts to hallucinate because he's infected too, seeing the people he killed blocking his way while the water continues to leak through crevices. Back to the crew, Han manages to gain Luna's trust because she sees the sticker his daughter put on his badge. This allows Han to put a tracker on her ankle just in case. Then the team starts making their way out, but Luna suddenly drops to the ground and hears the water flooding the hallway under theirs. Panicking, she runs in the opposite direction and the crew follows her right before the water reaches their hallway too. Vent lids continue to snap out all over the place and more water keeps coming in, but thankfully the crew runs fast enough to reach gate 7 and close it behind them. Here the crew finds a delirious Ryu, who shoots in the air to keep them back and starts crying as he apologizes for all the people he killed. It turns out he was one of the guards that kept the scientists from escaping five years ago and even pressed the button to close the gate. Noticing the water about to bring down the gate behind them, Gong shoots Ryu multiple times to bring him down, but Ryu manages to land a bullet on him too. Now the crew can step forward and bring down another gate that stops the water just in time. While Ryu vomits watery blood and dies, the team grabs his samples and rushes to the airlock, where they start suiting up. Gong is very weak, so Han closes his wound with tape and helps him put on his suit, but his efforts are in vain and Gong dies anyway. Once everyone is ready, Han tries to activate the air depressurization, but the system isn't working and he'll have to do it manually. Ignoring Song's pleas, Han sneaks out and activates the lever right before the water reaches this area too and brings him down. At that moment, Song and Hong notice that Luna has already gone out without her suit. Both women immediately leave the station, running for their lives as the water brings down the last gate and reaches the outside, instantly freezing. Afterward both women go looking for Luna and find her watching Earth. It seems she doesn't need oxygen to live. Nearby the water drops Han's body, and when Luna approaches him to try to return the badge, he dies crying for his daughter. Then finally a rescue shuttle comes to pick them up.